The title of our talks is The End is Not Far. It's not far. So we want to begin our thoughts in the book of Ecclesiastes, in the words of the preacher. All things are wearisome, he says. Man is not able to tell it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been will be, and that which has been will be done, and that will be done. So there is nothing new, he says, under the sun. Nothing. What is happening today has happened before and will happen until the Lord stops it. Is there anything which one might say, see, this is new, this happening today? Already it has existed for ages before us. There is no remembrance of earlier things and also of the latter things which will occur. There will be for them no remembrance among those who will come later. The words of the preacher. You know, Charles Dickens, the famous author, quoted in his book, The Tale of Two Cities, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. Well, brethren, we are now living in the worst of times, believe it or not. And you might question that. You say, wait a minute. I don't have that many troubles and problems, but you don't realize that there is a hedge built around each and every one of you like there was with Job. We're protected. We're protected 24 hours a day. The world is not. So that way you might not see all these bad things that are happening, but we just want to make you aware of them so you will be prepared. This once great country that we're living in is now teetering on the verge of collapse. In these thoughts, we will only be dealing with the facts of the occurrences now facing the United States. These will not be political or personal views, but facts. As stated, these things have all happened before, which we will show you. As a matter of fact, in many countries, they're happening. But we'll focus on this nation of Israel to drive our point home. We're facing the worst inflation this country has ever experienced in over 40 years. And if you go to the grocery store, you know what I mean. And it's beginning to take its toll on everyone, especially in the lower income brackets. Why, why am I talking about this, you, you ask me? Well, it's actually, it's because God is being replaced today with sectarianism in all areas of life. Remember when you were in grade school? Think back on that. And all stood up to say the Pledge of Allegiance in the school. The one nation under God. Well, that's all gone. In a lot of schools, the teacher would say a prayer to start the, the class day. That's all gone. In all of the state capitals in the United States, there were granite plaques spelling out the Ten Commandments. Those have all been removed. I was just informed the other day, and I hope this isn't true, but this is what I was told. I was just informed the other day that the flag of the United States, which hung in the lobby of the FI, FBI building, has been replaced by an LGBTQ flag. I hope this is not true. And according to the FBI, the FBI records indicate that over 840,000 children go missing a year in the United States. 800 and 40,000. Some are recovered, but the vast majority are taken by unscrupulous people with evil intent. 
for very nefarious causes, even removal and sale of organs. This is happening today. It's happened in the past. We are witnessing the decay the morale here in the United States, brethren, but not just here, but all over the world. Secret societies are springing up everywhere. Societies that deal in the black arts. Within the past six months, the national news was reporting of after school clubs, get this, that were promoting Satanism clubs. For the children. You know, it used to be that the kids went to glee clubs that met. Now the times have changed. It pains my heart to tell these things to you, but they're the truth. But we cannot bury our heads in the sand as if they don't exist. You know, we're supposed to be watchmen. We're supposed to be up on that high, high wall watching what's going on in this world right now. That's what we're told to do. What did Jesus say? He said that Satan is the God of this world right now. And we're getting so close to the end of this gospel age that we shouldn't be startled by these activities. Just 50 years ago, you would have never heard of these things that I'm telling you right now that they're happening today. So all I'm trying to do is bring you up to speed. Let's turn the clock back to see what transpired in the Jewish times. Let's go to 2 Kings, the 23rd chapter in the 10th verse. The year was approximately BC 624. The reforms at that time were undertaken by Josiah. The Jews at this time had slipped into utter depravity, absolute depravity. In verse 10, we read, He, Josiah, defiled Papad, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnon, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire from Moloch. They burn their children to death. They had been sacrificing their children to burn for this false god, Moloch. And similarly, worldwide child sacrifice is being carried out today, brethren. Children are being used for guinea pigs by the cruel of this world. What did he say? There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. Turning now to the book of Amos, chapter 2, verse 6, and chapter 8, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel, and for one I will not revoke his punishment, because they sell the righteous for money and the needy for a pair of sandals. This is what it says. This is not me. This is right out of your Bible. In a sense, the poor have to sell themselves into slavery to pay off trivial debts. Today, we see this in extremely high interest rates. People are turning their air conditioning systems off in order to have enough money to buy food. In verse, chapter 8, verse 5, we read in Amos, When will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain in the Sabbath, that we may open the wheat market to make the bushels smaller and the shekel bigger, and to cheat with dishonest scales, so as to buy the helpless for money and the needy for a pair of sandals? Nothing new under the sun. Today, our court systems are corrupt. And please don't look at me like I'm Jeremiah. They hated him. 
I'm telling the truth. Today our court systems are corrupt. Criminals are allowed to steal up to $900,000 in merchandise before any law is enacted. Can you imagine? Ten years ago, did you ever hear of anything like that? This is coming on very rapidly, brethren. They, they call it hit and run. That's what they call it. District attorneys who have been bought off do not prosecute criminals. Book and release, they call it. Book them in, let them go. In those days in Israel, they were no longer capable of acting with justice. Amos 3, verse 9 and 10. Amos 3, 9 and 10. Proclaim on the citadels in Ashdod and on the citadels in the land of Egypt and say, Assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria and see the great tumults within her and the oppression in her midst. But they do not know to do what is right, declares the Lord. Those who hoard up violence and devastations in their citadels, he says. So you see there again, brethren, there's nothing new under the system. Justice is gone. Today we see injustice in our schools, our religious system, and our governments. As Amos said in his day, chapter 6, verse 12, do horses run on rocks? Or does one plow with oxen? Yet you have turned justice into poison and the fruit of righteousness into wormwood. Unquote. Today, truth and honesty has almost evaporated from our daily lives. We live among corruption, sad as it is. You ask yourself, was it any different in Amos' day? And sadly, we say, no, it wasn't. Chapter 5, verse 10. They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks with integrity. So if you tell the truth, you were looked at badly. Because what you do is you expose them when you speak the truth. You ask yourself, why is this so? Brother, and we're getting to it. Corruption, hate, lack of morals. Well, brethren, it's simple. It's, it's really very simple. Just open your eyes and you'll see why. Satan is the God of this world. He is running the system and his minions. We read about this in Ephesians, the 6th chapter and the 12th verse, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. And this comes directly from the Apostle Paul. He says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, like us here, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness. In other words, you can't see them. Against spiritual forces of wickedness, in heavenly places. This is who he's talking about. Yes, brethren, there's an evil spirit world to a great degree controlling the activities of this world. But not for long. Not for long. As for as Jesus says in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world. You may have tribulation in the world, but take courage, he says, for I have overcome the world. Amen.